Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Red X podcast. We've got a pretty amazing conversation we're going to have with you today. Today, I've got Tristan from Lab Code Agents. You know, every everybody knows your name already, Tristan. So welcome to the podcast. Thanks, man. I'm happy to be here. Excited. The weather's nice out here in Southern California. It looks like the weather's nice where you're at, too. So what's not well, to smile? About? It's 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 because the wind blows all the smoke from from California our way, so it's nice there, not so nice here. <laughs> so, yeah, blame it on California, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's California. So hey, for everybody watching, whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, our website, or all of the other places that we broadcast this po you know podcast, thank you for being here. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, we will have something pulled up. In fact, I'm trying to pull it up now. Um, where I if you ask questions, then we can address those as they come in. If I miss those, we've got the team on the back end that will try to make that happen um, for you. So, but uh, just to start, why don't you give us a shout out from where you're at and we'll see that coming in. Amanda, hello. Amanda, just, just shout out to Amanda Smith, who is our most loyal podcast, you know, viewer, Tristan. I she's, love that, dude. Yeah, What's she's, up, Amanda? She's, so Amanda's from Texas, and she's on every podcast, um, and and so yeah, I mean. Curtis, quick question for you. Yes, sir. Is the Facebook page that it's running on is that a public page or a private one? It is public. It's it's Perfect. going both in our group and then in our public channel for the Red X channel also. All right, dude. I'm just gonna put it into Lab Code Agents right now. Okay, awesome. So. Good. While he's doing that, we've 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 uh, we're gonna have some conversations here. We're gonna get started with talking to Tristan about kind of his story. Um, where did Lab Code Agents come from? I think, uh, you know, we started this podcast the day that we had to kind of choose whether we we're gonna go remote because of the pandemic, and and oh. this whole this this whole podcast started with us saying, how can we help people create stability and find opportunity even amongst COVID and what's going on. And we started doing every single day we were bringing people on and giving them gold nuggets. Um, and and uh, that was hard to maintain just for, for the marketing team that we have here. So we're, we're still doing three yeah. times a week, but everything we do is, is just bringing the best of the best. Three, three times a week? Three times a week, we, we bring people on and Damn, bro. We're, we're trying to help people find opportunity in any marketplace. Um, and I think I think the biggest thing uh, that that it's done, and and Amanda could pipe in here because she's on here every every podcast, um, or any of the other regular viewers. I don't mean to leave you out, but you, they could jump in. Part of it is the community that gets created, and I think I think we're begging for that. I mean, we we had a company meeting today. We have a hundred people that are on you know Zoom, and we're staring at videos, and and you know. I'm I'm running the meeting, try to crack a joke, and and you get nothing. So then the meeting just ends up being dry, and I think we're craving connection right now amongst what's going on in the country, and and so I just wanted to talk to you about that. I mean, you run um, arguably the the largest real estate community in the country or multiple countries. Um, it's very engaged. I'm I'm a part of probably every real estate group that exists on Facebook. Um, but a lot of them don't have the engagement that yours has. Um, anyway, why don't we start, Tristan, why don't you introduce yourself? If somebody has been living under a rock and doesn't know lab code agents, um, why well, don't let's, you tell them? Let's lift that rock right now, buddy. Yeah, that's, that's right. Go ahead. So my, my name is Tristan Omar, and I've been in real estate since 2004 out of Southern California, right out of college, got into real estate went to law school, decided law school wasn't for me because there was big money in real estate. And then the market tanked, right? <laughs> so when the market tanked, I had to shift to online leads. And that's really what started my trajectory into lab coats because one of the companies that I teamed up with at the time was realtor.com. And I was speaking for them nationally, getting the same question over and over and over again, lead conversion, tech, what's the process? And I'm like, well, Let's start, let's start a community. And my wife said, let's start a Facebook group. So started a Facebook group, right? Listen to my wife. And then from there, it just started growing. I was the only one posting for a while. 
I brought in a few different moderators and agents. And then one of our friends, Steve Passanelli, who now works for BombBomb, said, hey, Tristan, I've got, I've got this good guy. His name's Nick Baldwin. Um, and he's looking to, to maybe jump groups from where his at, he's at. Uh, you may want to talk to him. I'm like, okay, just bring him on. I don't want to talk to him. Just bring him on. So I brought him on and he started posting. I'm like, oh, this guy's good, right? He understands the whole social game. And so we didn't talk to each other for six months because, I mean, why? It's just a Facebook group, right? right. <laughs> so, I mean, six months later, we're like, oh, there's, there's something happening here. So I picked up the phone. We talked. We connected. We became friends. And then it's just started getting bigger and bigger. Companies started picking us up and saying, whoa, what are you doing here? Do you want an affiliate agreement? Um, do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want to host an event? And then Facebook got a hold of us. They're like, hey, what are you doing? You've got the largest engagement from any group, period, in the world. And you guys also understand Facebook lead ads. Um, yeah. Maybe you should come up. So we started a partnership with them. We started consulting them. And then it just grew and grew from there, man. So I think the key to it was that we just keep on bringing value and we just never rest. I feel like I'm always behind. Like I always need to be doing something else because I'm just missing something. So there's an urgency inside of me that that I just need to cure, and it's I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to itch it. So uh, that's that's a little bit about lab code agents in me. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I've got uh, Amanda did respond. She said since the pandemic started, I began engaging more with this podcast and lab coats. Both are great platforms, and I've grown so much over the past few months. Big shout out to Red X and Tristan. So um, pretty awesome there. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so let's, uh, ha have you seen a change in the dialogue pre-COVID to what it is now or is kind yeah, of the same conversation? Okay, no, well, I think, I'm yeah, I'll give you an example. I'll go uh, micro first. And I'll start with this, a conversation I had with an agent. Sorry, <laughs> with a past client. I was sitting in front of Barnes and Nobles and very beginning of the pandemic, not not sure, everybody was like, not sure what was going to happen. I was picking up some coffee and he was there too. And I was like, what's up, dude? He's like, what's up? He's like, oh man, the world's going to, it's just going to be destroyed and the economy is going to tank and housing. It's like, it's going to be completely demolished. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, should I even say anything? Like, this is like contradictory to what I believe and what I've studied over the last few weeks, Right. And I'm like, ah, screw it. I'll just tell him. I go, dude, you're totally wrong. I go, if anything, the housing economy is going to, the housing is going to lift this economy out of where it's going to be in the next few months. And so we went back and forth and I was like, dude, I still love you. Yeah. Um, and so that was the sentiment of the whole country, right? Except you did have economists, you did have most professionals saying, hey, look, this is going to be taking off like this, like a V, right? Now it's more like a, a lazy V, right? It's kind of like, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. That's that's what it's looking like. But we were right on. And the housing, housing is lifting this. Now you do have some people saying, well, you know, what about all those people that that are out of luck with, with uh, not being able to afford their payments, right? All the forbearances. And what about all those people that can't even afford their rent, right? We haven't even seen that. And so that's true. Look, we haven't seen the effects of that. And we're not saying the economy is going to be cured by the housing, uh, but it is helping a lot right now because right. One, one thing that is very clear from everything that we're seeing is the separation of people who've got a ton of money versus those that are barely making it. That gap is growing immensely. And this right. isn't helping, right? So yeah, people are definitely gonna still be able to afford homes. And then those that couldn't are even, are, can't even afford them even more, yeah. right? And, and not a lot of people are talking about that. So now where we're at now is people are like, whoa, whoa, wow, what happened with real estate? All of a sudden, real estate picked up almost everywhere and they're taking a second look and some sellers are still holding back saying, well, we don't feel comfortable yet with the pandemic to be going out there and putting our home on the market because they've been in their home for six months and they're like, we need an extra room or like me, right? My neighbors on both sides of me, 
They have swimming pools. And I get to hear them splash in the water all day. And I don't have a pool. And I've already looked up how much it costs to build a pool and how much it costs to live a block away in a house that has a pool, right? And now I'm just waiting. So there are people who are waiting it out. Yeah. But what we're seeing now is a more positive outlook on housing, even in the media. You look at the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, they all have great things to say about the economy when it comes to housing. And that is driving a good sentiment that way. So that's how people are viewing housing. They think it's good, stable right now. They're starting to understand that it's not 08, 09, because that was repetitive at the very beginning, right? right. right? So that's that's where we're at. That's the sentiment we have. Right. Well, and, and hopefully people start to catch on because I think there's a whole bunch of buyers that are waiting for that 08, 09. They're going, I'm going to get the deal. I'm going to get the deal. And and the rest of us are so going, two and a half percent is a deal. Like you should buy a house right now because, <laughs> you, you know. The lowest rates ever. Oh, it's crazy. And yeah. and and that's good. Tell tell me about the sentiment in, in lab coats then and, and just the conversation do you think there was a bunch of agents that were freaking out during this? Yeah, and yeah, definitely. The community I, and, and I saw that. I mean, we definitely saw that. We had to control that that sentiment a lot by continually showing them what they could do, what agents can do in in times of of trouble, right? And so emotions were very high. A lot of people were like, "Well, what the hell do we do now?" Right. Yeah. And so we had to be solution oriented and come in and say, well, this is what you need to do. These are the agents that are succeeding right now. Let's interview them and talk to them. And so the one thing that we did did keep on pushing was that this was going to recover quickly right. and people needed to be ready. And so those people that were like my team, because we were pushing, had some of the most amazing months in the last two months. Like, dude, I look at the team, my team, and, and I don't think we've had two months like this in years yeah. and it's insanity. And so that's because we were ready to go. Right. Right. And so that's what we were continually pushing in lab codes too. Right. But yeah, dude, sentiment, look at Zillow right now. You knew I was going to bring that up. I know. I know. it. <laughs> look at Zillow right now with the, with Wait, what's don't, don't we want to talk about what's the best CRM? Isn't that the most? Isn't that yeah. the most common question you get? We'll get to that too. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, let's talk Zillow then for a second. Oh, that's so funny. So with Zillow now officially saying, "Well, hey, we're going to be a broker." They were already a broker in some states and some some right. places. That's fine. But more importantly, they say they're going to transact now through their own employees that are going to hold licenses, right, on properties that they're purchasing and they're going to sell. And so. Dude, I think people just overreact, honestly. And people don't like me saying this. They're like, I'm the devil and I'm with Zillow. Look, I'm not with Zillow. I don't even, I don't, I have no affiliate. Right. I used to pay Zillow. I used to pay Realtor.com. And I found other ways to do this through Google PPC, through Facebook lead ads, diving deeper with calls and past clients and amazing things. And so I look at Zillow in one way and I say, well, they, they disrupted, I know it's a commonly used word, but they disrupted our industry in a good way because what happened was a lot of agents, our whole industry was just complacent. They were just sitting there like, oh yeah, it's not, we're not gonna happen to us. I'm pretty happy the way I'm doing things. And then here comes Zillow with his estimate, right? right? And then all of a sudden it starts changing the way we do business. And some of the MLSs haven't caught up still. Like, why are we even paying some of these MLSs that do nothing for us? So Zillow is slowly pushing us to be better at our industry, at our own industry. And so when you start looking at it that way, you're like, well, you know what? Zillow is awesome. I'm not even going to spend any time thinking about how, how evil they are or how they lie to us and all that crap, because you can go on forever on that. Let's focus on how they're solving the problem for the consumer and beat them to that because that's the key we have to learn from them. You look at the competitors in any field and you start looking at, well, that's awesome that they're doing that, but how are they serving their clients? Because I wanna serve my clients better because right. that's my main focus in a niche. I can't go nationwide, but I can certainly go in my track or my area. And that's what I want people to learn and take away from Zillow. Like just 
stop with the hate and change it around and say, what can I do better for the consumer? Yeah, well, we got into the industry in similar time frames, and and I remember back in in 05, 06, a lot of the conversation was how do we keep the agent at the center of the transaction, and that that was like yeah. a big thing. I, you know, you go to conference, and it was all about how do we keep, and and I think what's been good for the industry is how, how do we keep the consumer, how do we keep the homeowner at the center of the transaction, and and what is their journey, and how do we best serve them because that is where the value to them is going to be. And, and yeah. you're right. If, and if somebody beats, if somebody beats agents to that, uh, they're going to take some of, they're going to take some of the market share. Um, so I, I, I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's great. I think technology pushes us to be better I and agree. disruption is inevitable. It's just a matter of where on the spectrum of disruption, um, because ev even I think this morning I'm scrolling through and there's the lab co lab code agents conversation. And somebody's saying, "Well, they're gonna, we're all gonna be working at Walmart." And, and, <laughs> that uh, person is for sure, <laughs> right? And and but but that's the mentality. It's like, well, he took something away from me, and instead of putting the focus on that, but that brings up a question for me um, with again with the community and with what that offers and, and bringing that, um, I mean, even, even pre-show you said, what's well, it's a, it's social, it's social media. It's a, a lot of social and we've seen how that can polarize people and yeah. how, how do, how do we filter through the garbage to make sure we're getting all of the advantage out of the community that a community does have to offer and, and, and not hone in on those, ne on the negativity. Dude, that, unfortunately, it comes down to the individual person, right? So uh, what we have, what we have internally is a reticular activating system in our mind, right? It's the RAS. And that's our filter. That's our filter of what we look for. It's like you decide you're going to get a Model X Tesla or you know what better? A 4GT, right? right. You're going to get a 4GT. You're driving down. You're like, damn, I, had, I didn't even notice that there were so many 4GTs here, Right. Well, guess what happens in real life anyway? If you're already having a negative day because you consistently think about Zillow and how they're destroying your world and how your clients suck and how lab code agents sucks and this piece of tech sucks, well then, what do you think you're gonna find in communities? What do you think you're gonna find when you go home? What do you think you're gonna find when you're watching the news? That's your filter. And so my goal is always, to help people with understanding their mind with yeah. emotions. And we do that subliminally through the webinars that we host, through the posts that I make, right? It's, they're paying attention, but it's subliminal, right? You're right. never gonna see me talk negatively or in a way that, that'll hurt the real estate agent. And so that's what I try to do passively. And it sticks. Look, people that follow me and know me, they know that we're only trying to help them because at the end of the day, you can get whatever tool you want. But if something's not right inside of you, yeah. that tool is going to do nothing for you. Right. You don't know how to work your business. Forget about the tool. Right. It's yeah. like it's like everything else, man. It comes down to you and how you are inside. Well, and and this is this is such a consistent theme. I mean, I don't know how many episodes we've done you know, probably approaching 150 episodes um, for this podcast since since COVID began. And it's mindset becomes always comes up. Why? Because we're we're grabbing very successful, highly ambitious people who are finding the opportunity in amongst a pandemic, amongst shortage of inventory and anything else, um, which as a side note, is is another conversation that you see such polarization, the shortage of inventory, and people are like, oh, yeah, there's nothing out there, and they complain about it. And other people are going, yeah, but that means days on market are really low. It means we're going for multiple offers, over asking, and and again, to your point, it's it's what are we focused on um, to that that you know we're going to find it, the belief bias, That's and, it. you know we're going to find it. All these biases that we have to deal with on a daily basis, dude. These, if people understood the psychology of your biases, it's it goes so deep. Like there's a bias for everything. Yeah. Right. 
Well, well, now that I understand that you, your goal is to manipulate my emotions every time I interact with you. Yeah. Here, yeah. <laughs> pull that back. I mean, what are you doing to try to? I mean, that sounds like a very worthy social cause. Uh, that 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 probably. I mean, is that something that drives lab coat agents and what you're doing with the? It community? does. Man. It actually drives everything that I do from from the core, uh, whether it's with lab coat agents, whether it's my team, my other businesses, and even my other brand, A Brilliant Tribe, where my goal is to remind you that you have a duty to lead, Yeah. right? Even if, even if you're only leading your family, your siblings, those people around you, you lead even when you don't know you're leading, yeah. right? Because we're an example to others. And it comes down to the basics of understanding that you have a duty and people don't understand that they have a duty as humans. And so my goal every day is to remind you in different ways that that duty is real. Right. And that it has to be there in order for you to succeed in life. So success doesn't come financially. It's not all about that. It's the way you lead your life and the way that people are talking about you behind your back and whose life you're affecting in a positive way, right? right? Because we can do either or. So talk, talk to me about then running a community with so many people. Um, I, I mean, do you moderate for that positivity? Do you, do you? We do, man. Uh, it's, and it's been tough. So we have, we have almost, no, we have just a little over 50 moderators, right? And so because we have, uh, let me check the latest stats for you right now. Uh, last time I checked, we had 500,000 comments, posts, likes every 28 days. And so we have to go through that on a daily basis, right? And so some conversations, some conversations, they go just nuts, right? And so we, we have to go through and the moderators delete certain comments, they mute certain people, they kick certain people out and they shut the comp, they shut the post down. Right. And, you know, some people complain, they're like, oh my gosh, you're, you're, you're censoring us. This is, this is crazy. I'm going to sue you. I'm like, go ahead and try to sue us. We're a free group here. We'll give you your $0 back. Uh, yeah, that's funny. It's just that people don't know. Here's the thing. People have almost uh, forgotten that the way you function in social media, in the community, is the way you also function in real life, but you just sometimes hold back because you're in person, right? Just because you're in person, like we're, we're together and I'm talking to you and I could be thinking something. I'm not going to tell you that, but if I'm on social media, I'll probably type it up because I have more guts, right? Yeah. And that connection right? It starts with a thought, then it goes into writing. And if I'm in person, maybe I'll do it. That's dangerous once you let it go. Yeah. And people don't understand that part. And that's what we try to regulate before it happens in the sense that working on the person, right? right? And so it's tough, dude, because we get all sorts of real estate agents from all across the world. Yeah. And, and some are extremely opinionated and we don't, if you're going to break rules and hurt people, we always lead with kindness. So we just kick you out of the group. This yeah. isn't for you. So back to your whole particular activating system and our, and our own subconscious filters. Um, ha has that been harder lately? I mean, the world seems to be negative. The, the, mm -hmm. if you're following the news, which, which I, I don't, um, as a point of pride, I, you know, quit listening to news at the beginning of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you know the news, the media, the, the everything going on with politics, and you know negativity sells more attention, um, sure. or, you know warrants more attention than positivity. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. H have you seen that with the, with the community? Are you moderating more? Are you deleting more? Kicking more people out? Or has the community itself helped people rise? You know, like yeah. a the tide rises all ships, and with the what you're doing to actively promote yeah. positivity. I think it has helped. Initially, we, we did have a lot of negativity at the very beginning, but it took us going all in mm -hmm. two, three webinars a day, consistent posting to so people can understand the tonality of what we are. Yeah. And it's almost there as a reminder. So people that are there that are following us understand. 
got it. We can't fool around in lab coats. If they get kicked out and they talk crap over there somewhere, right? And that's okay to us because we don't want them, right? right. We're only looking for the people that, that are looking to succeed at a high level through looking for processes, systems, technology, and what's working. And at the same time, we're doing our best to show you what type of real estate agent you should be based on the example that we that we provide on how we live our life, right? And so that's that's what it comes down to. That's how we try to set the tone on a daily basis. Yeah, I love that. I I I, I, I want to. It's not really shifting gears, but I want to forward the conversation to to all of us have our own communities, and and I keep bringing coming back to that because. You, because I, I just haven't seen anybody that's done what you've done in, in our industry to create the, the community that you've done. But each of us individually have our own sphere of influence that yeah. essentially is our own community. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, you know, not just for personal and our, and our personalized, but what advice would you give to real estate agents to do what you've done for your community, for them to start doing what, what they need to be doing for their own sphere of influence and start to influence the, the positivity there. Yeah, I think it starts with the message that you're delivering. So let's say you do wanna do a community type uh, setting, right? I always say, well, look, if you are gonna go the route of Facebook group or LinkedIn group, or even an online community, which you can go to Mighty Network, they have such a great app sort of thing where you can start a community as well. There you have to pay them. Uh, but it holds you outside of a social media outlet, which is right. pretty good. I say you have to really decide where what type of community I want to create. It doesn't necessarily have to start with real estate. And I think that's that's a big misconception. I always say, look, start with your passion, right? Like I'm going to pick on you. And we're just going to go uh, uh, on that route, okay? What do you love doing on your spare time? Like what's a hobby that you love, dude? So I... Yeah, for the purpose. So I have six kids, so pretty much my family's my hobby. Love it. So me too. I don't have six kids though, but my family is my hobby. And so when people ask me, well, why don't you go out and hang out with your friends? I'm like, eh, you know what? I'd rather hang out with my son and daughter because right. we're having plen uh, fun playing Minecraft or Boomerang Foo or something. So um, you would start, I would say, hey, man, that's your passion. Then start something around the family. Right. Start something along those lines as a community. Right. And and then I'd say, well, you can either choose to do it here or there or there and define it. So there's four types after after you know, Nick and I grew this group to where it's at. Uh, we we reverse engineered and thought, well, there are four approximately four types of communities you can build. Number one is a special interest one. You have kayaking, you have cats, you have dogs. I mean, you've seen cat groups, haven't you? I've seen cat groups. They're crazy. Like funny pictures of cats and check out my cat. Uh, we, may, we may have a few of those here on staff at the at Red X. <laughs> those make me laugh all the time. Especially that cat you're telling no and it's like moving the mug. It's like, right. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. <laughs> That's, I hate that cat. Uh, number two, type two. Uh, type two is more community type. And that's where I see a lot of real estate agents do, which is if you live in a certain community track or city or area, you want to start one that's specific to that, right? And then grow it from there. Or cheap, like geographic community is what you're saying. You, yep. you got it. Geographic. And I see a lot of those, right? And then type three would be something along the lines of a business community, um think of peloton have you been in that community that's yeah. a thriving community it's, a, it's an amazing community and number four would be something like lab code agents where it's based on a set of principles or standards or giving advice off of a specific niche right where real estate agents were giving advice on technology and processes and systems like that and so that's what we broke down the four things too and so I would say it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate because what happens, let's say we go in and we create one like yours, right? And the closest one that I could think of is one that's called, uh, it's called Grown and Flown. If you want to take a look at it, yeah. it's massive. 
And Grown and Flown is a community of parents that have children that are now grown and they've gone away, yeah. right? And that community has done such a great job with that niche. And you think, well, damn, who's running it? And you can see who's running it. You know, they do videos, they engage. And here's how you stand out with your specific field, because there's different fields in that one. Let's say you're the real estate agent running that community. Well, every time you do a video, right, you'd say, hey, it's Tristan in, uh, with Keller Williams here in Malibu and just wanted it. And then you talk and then you'd end it the same way. And you're never selling, but people know you're in real estate. Right. Right. Now you start creating this perception and people start following you and then asking you and then people say, hey, what? Who do we use for real estate if we're moving to? And then they tag you. So it doesn't necessarily have to start with a real estate community, like geographically, like you're saying. Yeah. It could be anything. Well, that's, I mean, that's amazing. I think I, I think everybody's trying to create community, especially right now. And, and I think it's a, it's the number one way to build your brand because you just are you. You don't have to pretend, you don't have to make up a brand and pretend that you're something. You just, just be you. And that is your brand is the experience that people have when they interact with you. So as a real estate agent to build a community where you can just be yourself and, and be authentic about the passion that you have. Uh, I think that's great. I, I also think there's a, there's a huge lesson to be learned, especially for new agents who, who are, you know, and I get it, but they're focused on the next deal. Um, yeah that they're afraid to, to kick someone out of their community. And, and you've mentioned several times as we've been talking about, if somebody doesn't fit, we, you know, we kick them out. So talk about that when it comes to an agent in my own community or my own sphere of influence, you know, is there, you know, what advice would you give to them about, about kicking someone out of that? I think, I think first you have to look at what your principles are, right? What your values are, right? How, how do you want to run the community? And there are some people that, I mean, there are other groups in Facebook that, that compete against ours or, you know, our, our friends and they, they run it completely different. They don't, they don't take any crap. If somebody disagrees with, with them, period, they kick them out. And so I think it's a, it's a fine line between being uh, kind of like, a, like a dictator versus having more of an open open world where you want as many people to grow as possible. Right. And if you, if you really do that, you start looking at, well, maybe I'm not right all the time. Right. Maybe there are different ways of looking at this. Right. And it's, believe it or not, it's super hard, especially right now, looking at the world that where it's at, right. You either wear a mask or you don't. And all of a sudden that's political. Right. So, you know, it, for some reason, the middle ground is getting, is, is just going away, man. Right. And so that's where, where you have to take a look at and look at the greatest leaders that have existed. And there are some leaders that have existed that suck, right? I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the greatest leaders. Right. The greatest leaders, you look at it and down the line, every time that you ask them, well, what, what's been the secret to success? And over and over and over, you find that they say, well, the secret to success is having the ability to look at the other side and know that you're probably not right and the answer is somewhere in the middle. Right. Right. And that that's key in running a community because especially if you're trying to do this for your business, you don't want to leave a bad impression on people inside of the community, right. right? Imagine kicking somebody out because they disagreed with you, and that was, and that person happened to be connected to whoever and whoever. And you know, it's a, it's a very fine line. So just, just know that just because somebody disagrees with you, don't kick them out. If they break a rule or a guideline, like they start cursing somebody out, they're bullying somebody, then that's different, right? right. That's clear. Well, I and I and I think what. I'm hearing is regardless of the four different types of community that you might, you might create there, there's still, you still have to understand your values or your principles and, and kind of understand that up front before you just start booting people out. It can't be, yeah. um, you know, so I like that. We do have a question. What are some suggestions you have for a newer agent looking to engage more 
in a community, maybe on a much smaller scale. So rather than go create a community and that whether that's an agent in their actual community or an agent in a real estate agent community, what suggestions do you have for a new agent? Great question. What I would do is I try to join as many communities as possible and see which ones you start connecting with or feel like you have some affinity to. And then once you get a grasp of what's going on in that community and you see, wow, you know what? There, there may be an opportunity here. There's no clear cut real estate agent that's referred here. At that point, you want to reach out to the admins and say, hey, admins, I'm a real estate agent and I'm wondering if you're interested in making some money. What if I pay you $200 a month to market here? That way every referral I get or 500 or however much look at it as a business. Right. Right. And I bet you that in most cases, most admins in most groups don't even know that they can monetize their group. So when you right. talk to them, they'll be like money. I didn't even know we can make money here. Right. Of course. Let's take, let's talk. So that that's how I would approach it. Just get right to it. I, I think that's great. And what about a new agent um, engaging in your community? We talked about this before. Um, they're jumping in. They're jumping in. They're getting advice from a whole bunch of people who are engaging Whoa. in the conversation. Yeah. Um, what are the pros, the cons, you know, the things they need to be careful of as a new agent always going to crowdsource their information? That's a, that's a great question because you never know who's giving the advice, right? That's the danger. I always suggest that when you do ask questions, uh, you you kind of do it like a poll, right? Expect a lot of different answers. And then you try to gravitate to the answers that the admins or moderators give you because they're, they're tagged with a little shield, right? Or, gotcha. or a little symbol. And so you look to those more. And if you ever have a question in usually any community, you can just reach out to them directly through Messenger and they'll respond. So definitely that's the way I would approach it um, because look, I'm out here and I've been in real estate since 2004. I'm in the top 1% in the world in real estate. So yeah, I can give you great advice on real estate, but don't ask me about uh, aerodynamics. I don't know anything about that. So. Right, right. Or muscle cars with the Ford Dude, GT. I wish I knew about muscle cars. I don't know any. I just know that I like the Ford GT. All right. All right. All right. Well, look. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot about community. I, I think that you've contributed a lot to the real estate in terms of community and doing that. Um, and, and hopefully people listening today have taken some advice about how to get involved in either creating their own community or, or jumping in. But um, where, where, obviously lab code agents, we're going to post the group in all of the comments for people. If you're not a part of that, I don't know where you've been living, um, or how you've been doing real estate, but we're going to post those links for you anywhere else they should go and engage. I mean, I know you have so much more to offer than the Facebook group. Can you yeah. speak to that a little bit and tell people where to go? For sure, man. There's, uh, you can go follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on YouTube. I've got some great videos on YouTube. Uh, and there is a newsletter, but I'm trying to figure out how you can sign up for it. I've got about 53,000 people on it, a lot of executives and CEOs from, from around the world on that. And I pour my heart into that one. I write it out every week. And that goes pretty deep into, into leading. So you want to go to that one? I think it's my full name.com. So it's tristanalmada.com. You can take a look at that one. Okay. Other than that, you can reach me on Instagram, Facebook. You can find my phone number on Google and text me. Awesome. Tristan, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I know I, I know you must live a lot on Zoom and podcasts here, um, but comes with the celebrity status, man. So, Dude, I, I love your setup here, by the way. Thank you. Good job on that. Thank you. We uh, So we have fun. Uh, for everybody who is tuned in, thank you so much. If you want to continue the conversation, you can go to our Facebook page, our Facebook group, Lab Code Agents, because um, uh, I think you put the put the podcast in Lab Code Agents so you can yep. continue the conversation there. If you're a customer, join us on the forum, forum.theredx.com, and we can 
talk there. Otherwise, we'll see you Monday at 1.30 Mountain Time for another podcast. Thanks so much. And Tristan, thank you again. Thanks, guys.